Hello. Welcome to Houdini 11 Shader Interface Design for Artists. In this training video, we're going to take a look at the interface for the Mantra Surface Shader, which is this one you see right in front of you. And we're going to do some redesign work to make it a little bit more functional for artists. We're going to deal with parameters that exist inside the Surface and Displacement tabs. Now this uh, setup, this interface is not too bad, it's logical. Under Surface you have Diffuse, Subsurface, Reflect, Refract, Emission, Opacity, and Settings. And that seems pretty straightforward where you'd expect to find everything. Except insofar as you can never know if you have a Diffuse and a Reflect map on unless you look through two different tabs. And if you want to know if you have maps on all of the channels, you actually have to individually click through every single uh, tab in the interface to find out where they all exist and there's no one place that you can know that so if you could build a shader but if you have to come back to it a month later and do some work and you have to get to know the shader again you actually have to dig through a whole bunch of tabs and look at a whole bunch of information so what we're going to do is we're going to roughly maintain this tabbed uh, th this tabbed hierarchy for the advanced settings and we're going to take some of the simpler and most commonly used settings such as the enable buttons, the intensity buttons and the use map buttons and we're going to move them up above here into rows of controls and there's going to be one line for each channel, one for diffuse, one for color, one for subsurface, one for reflect and you notice reflect is split into reflect lights and reflect objects and environment map. Each of those is going to be its own line as well. And what it's going to look like at the end is this. So you see the tabbed interface is down below. It still has surface and displacement and OpenGL. Surface is split up uh, a little more extensively now. Instead of having just five tabs we have ten tabs here and they're set into their uh, logical channels, diffuse color, um, what they called uh, emission before is now called luminous. See there, luminous, which is a little more descriptive. We have reflect lights and reflect objects in their own tabs. The environment map, opacity, refraction, uh, refraction, subsurface scattering, and settings. And now up above here, what you can tell is by looking at a material and looking at this interface, you can tell instantly if it has a map applied to it if it is enabled, and what its basic settings are. Its intensity, color, luminous, uh, luminous might have intensity on it, uh, whether or not it's reflecting lights or objects, whether or not it's partly, o o whether partially um, opaque or transparent, whether or not it has refraction or subsurface scattering or displacement enabled or anything like that. So let's just take a quick look through what the final product, product is going to be like. Uh, we can def turn diffuse off and on, uh, we can set our diffuse intensity right here, brighter and darker. We can add noise. Uh, we can change and any of the advanced tabs, uh, any of the advanced controls like what the noise, what type of noise and its amplitude and so forth are, are down below. The tabs are reserved for more advanced parameters. The simple ones are up above. We can apply a noise map. Uh, in this case uh, you can see the uh, uh, map um, parameters become enabled when you turn map on. So you can select, uh, for example, a map of stripes and put it on there for the diffuse channel. Uh, we can change, the, we can turn the color off and on right here. And set the color, we can put a color map in if we wish for example. Uh, let's see, I must have a photograph here that we can put in. This is multiplied by this color by the way, so I can turn the color off to take the multiplication out or obviously I can also go back and set the color to white. I'll just select white from, from here. Uh, and all the other channels. Um, luminous, whether or not it's luminous, whether or not it emits light, although um, uh, diffuse bounces has to be turned on in order for you to see it actually emit light. Reflection of lights, uh, what we've previously known as specularity is right there. Reflection objects, so you can see now the, the ground is reflecting in there. Uh, 
environmental reflection map if you want to put an environment to reflect in, although you should probably use an environment light uh, for that. It's probably more appropriate. Uh, you can change the opacity right here and apply an opacity map if you wish. Once again, we'll try that stripes again. So you can change your opacity based on a map. There's a lot of functionality actually in this interface that doesn't even exist in the uh, basic mantra shader. We've added a lot of extra things. Uh, also, you know, subsurface scattering. Um, we can apply displacement. There's nothing in the displacement channel yet, but we could, for example, turn on some noise to make a displacement. Or we could use a displacement map. Again, I'll use that uh, stripes. It's a good example. So we can do a stripes displacement. And then there's fake displacement uh, bump and normal maps, although normal isn't working right now. Uh, that needs to be repaired by side effects, but I know they're working on that right now. So uh, hopefully that gives you an overview of what our final uh, look is going to be like. Um, and, and hopefully even more importantly, you get a sense here of how powerful it is to have all of these basic settings right directly in front of you in one interface. And, um, you know, some people may look at that and go, oh my god, that's monolithic. How can you have so many controls in one place? But the real beauty here, there's two beauties here. You, this system allows you to very quickly set up a material, but even more importantly, coming back and looking at a material, it allows you to very quickly uh, analyze it in case uh, there's repairs that need to be made. One of the one of the great functionalities of this you may have noticed is that when I click on color, this automatically goes to the color tab. When I click on opacity, it automatically goes to the opacity tab. So as soon as I select a control, it automatically brings up the more advanced uh, parameters for me if I want to work on it. If I want to put a map in color, obviously I'm going to enable it and then I'm going to click to the color map and select the map. Well, it already does that for me. So we have there's a little bit of a scripting going on underneath here, just a little bit, nothing to be afraid of. It's actually very, very simple. So if you're not a scripter or a coder, there's nothing to be intimidated about. Um, you'll see how simple it is. These are, these are tiny, simple little scripts called callbacks uh, that get run every time we click one of these controls. Uh, and you'll also notice that when the map is not in use, all of its controls are disabled, and that tells you that you can't use this right now, so don't, e don't even bother trying. Uh, so, And those are all wired together as well, and we'll learn how to do that with also some, uh, some very script simple little scripting commands as well, called a disable when. There's a disable when uh, input in that parameter. So, without further ado, uh, let's open up our basic uh, mantra surface interface and start fiddling around with it.